today's lesson is going to be general marksmanship. I say general marksmanship and you probably notice that I have two weapons laying in front of me. Doing that on purpose. The class, as was taught to me, was with not this, but an M16A2. Think of this with a handle sight and no rails. We're going to discuss the four fundamentals of marksmanship. If anybody can tell me what they are, that's great, because I already know that it's steady position, sight picture, breath control, trigger squeeze, in that order. Nope, none of those fundamentals are more important or less than port important than each other. However, they are in that order because you have to build each of them in that sequence. And I'm going to try and show you why. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my steady firing position with this weapon. Because in order for me to fire a precise shot, I have to steady this weapon. If this weapon is moving around a lot, you know, like like what would happen if you were in the back of a truck getting ready to do an organized drive-by, well, you're not going to have the precision that you need to hit a target at 300 meters. This is referred to as the prone unsupported. Supported and unsupported is whether or not you're laying your weapon on something. If you're in the military, specifically the Army doing a BRM range, a basic rifle marksmanship range, you will have a couple of sandbags laid in front of you for the first portion of the test. Since uh, I don't feel like wrestling around with a duffel bag or a backpack, and because, well, I don't need support to aim at a light socket that is right in front of me, the unsupported position is just fine. So the steady position is so important because if you're not steady, having a good sight picture that's moving around is not going to help. You know, breath control is nice, you know, but if you're not steady, well, then you haven't reached a point where you need to start using your breath control. Your trigger squeeze, well, your trigger squeeze, no matter how perfect and steady and controlled, if your position's not steady and and still, then this perfect trigger squeeze isn't doing a damn thing. So what you need to do is get that steady position. The second one is sight picture. Now, sight picture refers to putting your front sight post in the center of that little hole in the back of your in the back of your sight. Now, sighting systems differ, and that is why I have a second weapon laying next to me right now with its iron sights. Because, well, let's go ahead and make that transition right now over to the AK. So, now we're pointing an AK at the wall. Now, my back, my rear sight post does not have a hole in it. Hmm, so then how am I supposed to center that front sight post blade inside of a little hole? Well, what the hell, Kramer? You don't know what you're talking about. Well, the hole has to do with AR-15s, M16s, M4s, and stuff like that. This has a hole in it. This does not. However, the idea of a sight picture is the same. It's just going to be the correct... The answer to what is a correct sight picture will change when you go from AR to AK. So... My... On sight posts that are not broken like my other AK the top of this and the top of this will line up somewhat I may be wrong about that because no one has taken me to have formal training done with AKs and if you want me to give better information in these classes about AKs uh, lots of money lots of ammo give me some AKs to play with take me to a range where ain't nobody gonna get mad at me for having a select fire instead of just a semi-only weapon because damn it I like to shoot all fucking day so your sight picture 
for the most part, I'm sure if I looked up a TM that was translated into English or written in English for Americans who find AKs, yes, that would be a good thing for most of you to do is find some actual, like if you buy a weapon and it comes with a guide on how to use it, try to read that guide because reading will help you out a lot. So, right now I've got my site post aimed at the same reference point as I did with my M16. And if I were to pull the trigger on semi, and if the weapon is zeroed correctly, again, same thing about the recoil with the M16. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to land those BBs in the same place. So you don't have to you don't have to death grip your weapon. All you got to do is just keep the weapon still. And if your weapon does happen to be one of those electric blowbacks or gas blowbacks of some sort that you pay too much for to have extra moving pieces, then if you're dealing with automatic fire, your fundamentals still matter. But if your weapon jumps around because you're on full auto, let go of the trigger. Your weapon will stop firing, and guess what will happen? Your weapon will steady again. So, for, for BRM, you're not putting your weapon on burst or auto in the first place. Having your arm straight like this, instead of trying to do this, And now my weapon is steady. In fact, the only reason why my sight post is moving is because of breathing and talking. Because my jaw is moving along my stock right here. Which brings us to the third fundamental, which is breath control. Notice my weapon moving up and down. I'm exaggerating the movement for the camera. However, the movement is there when you are doing this. Ever notice in a video game your scope kind of waves around and stuff and goes up and down? That is the effect of your breathing. Now since we can't stop you from breathing, as fun as that concept sounds, what we can do is learn how to utilize the natural act of your breathing. So, firing at the natural pause in your breath, which is usually three to five seconds, can be... If with practice, you can take it to probably 15 seconds or more. In fact, in a playlist on my channel, I've made made it a point to put a couple of videos that was taught by actual instructors, and they do say that. However, if you do that too much, you're going to mess yourself up, you know, not get enough oxygen to your own brain. Your vision's going to get messed up. And those of you who wear glasses most of the time, you're going to have a problem too with that. So... What you're going to do, bang, release, I inhale, my weapon is pointing down a bit. Usually what you're told to do is when you're acquiring your target to aim down and bring your sight up. Because if your sight's up here, your weapon, right now I cannot see my my socket over there that I'm aiming at because my barrel and my sight post the whole thing is in the way so I don't even know that there's a socket there anymore because my brain is fizzed out because I played too many video games so I point down all of a sudden if I tip my eye up I can see the light socket then I bring as I breathe out I now have the bottom hole of the socket lined up ready to fire. My blade is in the center of the hole and if I shut up for a second my weapon is perfectly still. But wait! There's one more thing! Because what makes the weapon go bang? I really hope you already know this by now. If not, you're probably not old enough to be watching these kind of videos, especially with the way I talk. So what you want to do we're going to talk about trigger squeeze. What you want to do is listen. So what you want to do is you want to put your finger... You'll have varying levels of being told what to do. 
most of my instructors that I've ever had have told me to put this, not this, not this. You want your hand choked up on the grip to make sure that you can do this correctly. You want to squeeze, don't pull, and you want to be surprised by the shot. You're going to hear that a lot too. Okay? So now I've just pulled the trigger. What you don't want to do is, because you notice now I'm jerking my weapon. In fact, if you watch my magazine, check this out. I'm being jerked a little bit side to side. So what you want to do is pull the trigger, excuse me, squeeze the trigger, and then hold it when you're on semi and when you're on auto. Then release the trigger and you'll hear a click. Fire, click, fire, click. It should be a steady movement. So, the four fundamentals, steady position, sight picture, breath control, trigger squeeze. Let's go ahead and do that with an AK. So now, with the stock in the pocket of my shoulder, my cheek position clear correctly onto the stock my sights are set up and lined up the way they need to be now I'm aimed at my target correctly and there you go Same damn thing. And I guarantee you, if you had a G36 without a scope, you'd have the same exact thing. And if you use the four fundamentals, and your weapon zeroed and sighted, and your hop-ups dialed correctly, you will make some amazing shots. With weapons with bipods, that's great if you are always laying on the ground when you are shooting people. The point of this is if you use the simple things that the Department of Defense has been doing for many, many years, you too can be victorious. The reason why Hunters who join the military have a terrible time learning how to shoot an M16 is because the fundamentals they used with daddy's hunting rifle and what they are told to do now are not the same. And it takes a lot of corrective training to get rid of bad muscle memory. Name me my four fundamentals. Go ahead. I'm not going to give you the answer. Those of you who said the answer that showed up on the screen, good job. You can read. Thanks for watching.